In an unfolding legal quagmire, hip-hop mogul Diddy finds his progeny ensnared in another civil lawsuit. Yet this time, the focal point is his son, Christian King Combs. A woman has come forward, accusing the younger Combs of assault. This revelation echoes the ancient proverb, the apple does not fall far from the tree, as Christian appears to mirror the controversies that have long surrounded his father, Sean Diddy Combs, once known as Puff Daddy, now simply referred to as Love. Recently, Diddy has been embroiled in a cascade of lawsuits, and now his son steps into the same shadow. Christian's accuser, Grace Omar, alleges that during an incident in 2022 aboard a yacht owned by Diddy, Christian forced himself upon her. Grace's accusations form part of a larger legal maelstrom already swirling around Diddy, who was himself facing a litany of legal troubles at the time of her filing. According to her account, Christian's behavior inflicted severe emotional anguish while she was performing her duties on the yacht. The lawsuit further asserts that Diddy, as the yacht's proprietor, played a role in enabling his son's alleged misconduct. Grace accuses him of facilitating the actions that unfolded. Christian's legal counsel has dismissed these claims as entirely baseless, with his lawyer branding them as fabricated attempts orchestrated by Grace and her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn. However, Blackburn counters, drawing parallels between father and son, stating, like father, like son, lamenting the necessity of filing such a lawsuit but asserting that Christian has seemingly adopted his father's allegedly depraved conduct. Grace alleges that Christian administered a substance that altered her state of mind, leading to the encounter. The incident purportedly occurred within a recording studio set up aboard the yacht. The lawsuit includes transcripts of audio recordings, which Grace claims capture her rebuffing Christian's advances. These recordings, she says, were made by one of Diddy's producers present during the time of the incident. Employed as a steward at the time, Grace's responsibilities included providing refreshments and meals for the guests from evening until the break of dawn. She claims to have witnessed a continuous stream of celebrities and escorts aboard the vessel, some of whom became suspiciously inebriated after consuming small amounts of the provided drinks, hinting at the possibility of the beverages being spiked. On the night in question, Grace was informed that Christian King Combs would be arriving alongside Rodney, Lil Rod, Jones, one of Diddy's producers, for the purpose of recording a track in the yacht's makeshift studio. She recalls that both men appeared intoxicated upon arrival, with Christian casting inappropriate glances her way. He allegedly pressured her into consuming multiple shots of tequila, escalating his aggressiveness with each drink she took. Eventually, Grace began to suspect that the alcohol had been tampered with, given the overpowering effects it had on her. According to the lawsuit, as Grace's state deteriorated, Christian began to touch her inappropriately. Despite her repeated refusals, Christian persisted, attempting to manipulate the situation by suggesting they inform a crew member that she would be staying with him for the night. As she tried to deflect his advances, he grew more persistent. Although she momentarily managed to evade him, Christian later found her again and demanded she help him locate a place to sleep. She directed him to the yacht's cinema room, where the situation took a darker turn. Once there, Christian allegedly blocked her path, stripped off his clothes, and attempted to force her into performing oral sex. In the struggle that ensued, Grace fought back until someone else entered the room, at which point the situation momentarily de-escalated. Grace asserts that the trauma from the incident left her reeling, with subsequent panic attacks and thoughts of self-harm haunting her. She claims that, like his father, Christian now stands accused of similar offenses, Though Diddy has historically denied all such allegations, often asserting that the women involved were merely seeking financial gain and to tarnish his name. Amid the ever-growing number of legal challenges Diddy faces, this lawsuit casts another dark shadow over his legacy, with the implications of the accusations potentially reverberating through both father and son's futures. According to security footage from The Raid, two of Diddy's sons were present at the residence, while the bad boy for life, rapper himself was notably absent. The video showed law enforcement harassing Diddy's sons, with drones and heavily armed police vehicles swarming around the property. Just a week after the Department of Homeland Security conducted the raid on Diddy's homes, Misa Hilton, the mother of two of his sons, shared disturbing footage of the incident online. In the video, her sons, Justin Dior Combs and Christian King Combs, were subjected to harsh treatment as they had high-powered weapons pointed at them. 
Outraged, Misa took to social media, condemning the force used against her sons, calling it deplorable. She asserted that had they been the children of a non-black celebrity, they wouldn't have been treated with such aggression. She questioned the necessity of the actions, writing, Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun to the back of his head while handcuffed? Highlighting the racial disparity in how her sons were treated, she further expressed her anger by stating, The attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. We will fight for justice, using every available resource. Though Justin and Christian were briefly detained, they were not charged with any crimes. The experience, however, left a lasting mark, as Diddy's sons had to bear the brunt of the situation in their father's absence. According to rumors circulating, many believe Diddy should have been home to face the consequences of his actions rather than subjecting his sons to such treatment. Shortly after the raid, Christian King Combs appeared to voice his frustrations through music. In a song that was intended to be a diss track aimed at critics of his father, Christian seemingly revealed sensitive details about his family. While it remains unclear whether he was divulging actual family secrets, the track caused a stir, with many speculating that Christian was, in fact, snitching on his father. In the lyrics, he sang, Knock them walls down like when them fetty boys ran in both of our cribs. Too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door, cause that's the one they missed. Whether or not the verse contained real revelations, it fueled rumors that Christian had exposed private family matters. On September 16, 2024, Sean Diddy Combs was arrested and held at the Metropolitan Detention Center, awaiting trial. As the founder of Bad Boy Records, Diddy's detention has garnered significant media attention. His legal team emphasized that Diddy had fully cooperated with authorities during his arrest and had even voluntarily relocated to New York in anticipation of the charges being filed against him. His lawyer insisted that these actions were those of an innocent man with nothing to hide and expressed confidence in Diddy's ability to clear his name in court. However, prosecutors have painted a far darker picture. They allege that Diddy has long been involved in crimes such as bribery, kidnapping, forced labor, and more. They accuse him of leading a criminal enterprise that exploited women, using threats of violence to coerce them into drug-fueled orgies with male escorts. The prosecutors also claim that Diddy's staff was complicit, arranging travel for the victims, and even supplying intravenous fluids to help them recover after the parties. Additionally, the prosecution argues that Diddy recorded his intimate encounters and used the footage as a tool to intimidate his victims into silence. Despite the gravity of these accusations, Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnifilo, staunchly maintains his client's innocence, asserting that all encounters were consensual. While Diddy faces significant legal challenges and remains in custody, his son Christian has been spotted enjoying life despite his father's indictment. Christian recently made a public appearance to support his girlfriend, Raven Tracy, at her event, Body by Raven Tracy. Raven shared multiple photos of the occasion on Instagram, captioning one with, Y'all know I love my man. I love my man. I love my man. Don't play with me. This joyful outing came just days after Christian had shown support for his father at the courthouse. On September 17th, following Diddy's court appearance, Christian, along with seven associates, requested copies of his father's indictment, which outlined three charges against Diddy. Racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion, and transportation for commercial sex work. The indictment revealed that these alleged crimes occurred at Diddy's properties in Manhattan and Los Angeles, including Combs Global, Combs Enterprises, and Bad Boy Entertainment. It also accused Diddy of physically assaulting his former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie, and claimed that his staff, including security personnel and supervisors, were involved in enforcing these illegal activities. Diddy's legal troubles have caused many celebrities to distance themselves from him. For instance, during his 54th birthday party in 2023 at Lavo Restaurant in London, Diddy invited high-profile guests like Naomi Campbell and Janet Jackson. While both posted photos with him on social media during the celebration, they quickly removed those posts after Cassie filed a lawsuit against Diddy just days later. Rumors began to swirl that Naomi and Janet might have been involved in Diddy's questionable activities, especially since Naomi had previously been linked to the Jeffrey Epstein scandal and Janet had defended her late brother, Michael Jackson, during his own legal battles. As Diddy's case has escalated in September 2024, 
other celebrities have also adjusted their social media activity. Notably, both Usher and Pink deactivated their ex, formerly Twitter, accounts. Pink explained during an appearance on The Carrie and Tommy Show that she had received multiple death threats and was overwhelmed by the negativity on social media, describing it as damaging to her mental health. Usher, after deleting thousands of tweets, returned to X, claiming his account had been hacked, although many were skeptical of his explanation due to his long history with Diddy. Speculation grew that Usher might be connected to Diddy's alleged misdeeds, especially after his social media purge. Another celebrity caught up in the controversy is Meek Mill. On September 24, he took to Twitter, offering $100,000 for an investigative team to look into why his name was being linked to Diddy's case. He expressed suspicion about media reports involving him, hinting that something was not right. The question on many people's minds is just how extreme Diddy's infamous freak-offs were, with numerous celebrities now distancing themselves from the scandal. Back in 2018, during an episode of The Breakfast Club radio show, Diddy was teased about a party where he had passed out from drinking. The hosts even played an audio clip of Diddy from the event where he could be heard saying, I like it when you like this, Daddy. At the time, the exchange was lighthearted, but given Diddy's current legal battles, the clip has resurfaced with a more critical lens. Point one host, Charlemagne the God, recalled a tense encounter with Diddy in 2010 after Diddy's album Last Train to Paris was released. Charlemagne had criticized the album, dubbing it Shake Weight Music, which angered Diddy. He recalled Diddy confronting him at the radio station, yelling and threatening him. Fast forward to the present, and Charlemagne has not held back in condemning Diddy's actions, particularly after the footage of Diddy's alleged attack on Cassie made headlines. Charlemagne emphasized the importance of addressing domestic violence and the need for men to heal from their unresolved trauma. A.T. The heart of the allegations against Diddy are his infamous freak-offs, wild sexual marathons that reportedly involved numerous people. During the height of his fame in the early 2000s, Diddy was frequently seen with a large entourage, including a notable incident in Tokyo at the Seventh Heaven Strip Club. According to a dancer named Rachel Kennedy, Diddy invited her and her friends to a private party at his hotel. She recounted arriving at the hotel only to find Diddy alone, wearing a robe and holding a bottle of champagne. Rachel Kennedy, a topless dancer who was once invited to one of Diddy's infamous gatherings, recounted that although Diddy didn't partake in cocaine use during the party, it was available. She noted that he claimed to only smoke weed at the time. At the peak of his career, Diddy was not only known for global hits like I'll Be Missing You and Bad Boy for Life, but was also embroiled in various controversies, including a 1999 nightclub shooting. Despite this, he maintained his reputation as a prominent figure in the music industry and as a successful entrepreneur and record label executive. His high-profile relationship with Jennifer Lopez only further elevated his status. According to Rachel, during the gathering, Diddy had her and others watching Jlo's music videos repeatedly before they engaged in what she described as a freak-off. While the group was in Diddy's bedroom, his head of security abruptly entered and began physically attacking the women, ordering them to leave. To Rachel's shock, Diddy did nothing to intervene, which led her to believe that the incident was premeditated. Rachel's experience left her deeply traumatized. Recent reports have also linked NBA superstar LeBron James to Diddy's freak-offs, after an old video resurfaced of LeBron praising Diddy's parties during a 2020 Instagram Live session. LeBron had stated, Everybody knows, ain't no party like a Diddy party. At the time, these comments seemed harmless, as there were no allegations against Diddy. However, in light of the current scandal, LeBron's connection to Diddy's parties has sparked debate. The resurfacing of this video has led many to speculate about the attendees of these gatherings. Some internet users have been quick to draw connections between LeBron and Diddy's controversial events. Meanwhile, reports from a Homeland Security agent suggest that video footage from the parties has been recovered, but it is unclear whether these tapes will be made public. Rumors have also circulated that Kim Porter, the late mother of Diddy's children, discovered sex tapes in a hidden vault belonging to Diddy. According to a post by an ex-user named Shadow of Ezra on September 22, 2024, Kim made copies of the tapes to protect herself as she tried to distance herself from Diddy. After discovering the tapes, she tragically passed away from pneumonia, though her family remained skeptical and suspects Diddy played a role in her death.
The same ex-user claimed that Khloe Kardashian had attended one of Diddy's freak offs in 2014. According to the post, Khloe had planned to leave early for a 5.30 a.m. flight, but found that everyone at the event was unconscious and naked. This incident, allegedly linked to Diddy's notorious gatherings, has added fuel to the ongoing scandal. When Diddy was brought to court on September 17, 2024, U.S. District Judge Andrew Carter ruled that Diddy must remain in custody while awaiting trial. Judge Carter, who is overseeing the case, did not specify a trial date. One of the prosecutors, Emily Johnson, emphasized that these freak-offs were central to the case. She revealed a text message from one of Diddy's alleged victims that read, I have gaping cuts. You hit me in the head two times. I'm not a rag doll. I'm someone's child. Emily Johnson also presented evidence suggesting that Diddy had attempted to interfere with the investigation by reaching out to witnesses in the months following Cassandra Ventura, Cassie, going public with her allegations. According to the prosecution, Diddy contacted victims, attempting to manipulate them into providing false narratives, claiming that their sexual encounters were consensual. Diddy's attorney, Mark Agnifilo, proposed a bond package that included Diddy's $48 million Miami residence as collateral, but the judge rejected the offer. The judge expressed concerns that Diddy could use his influence and associates to tamper with the case, possibly sending coded messages to his contacts to act on his behalf. As a result, Diddy is currently being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York. Known for being one of the most secure facilities in the U.S., Diddy has pleaded not guilty to the charges and has been denied bail twice. As speculation continues to swirl around the case, some believe that Diddy's son, Christian, may attempt to influence the trial in his father's favor. Rumors have surfaced that Christian might even join his father in navigating the case, but for now, these remain unconfirmed.